five of the main reasons why people are getting marked for observation in that driving test. I'm going to be talking about observation moving off from a parked position, observation turning right at roundabouts, at the reverse around the corner, and I'm also going to show you two examples of why you would fail your test for observation turning left. Number one, and this is very important, we're going to talk about observation moving off. I use Gosho, alright? If you don't know what that is, there's going to be a video above. But take a look at this quick video. Well, just remember, Gosho. G for gear. O for observation from left to right. S for signal. H for handbrake. O for observation. And off we go. So the main reasons why you could get marked for observation moving off from a parked position is number one, not checking out your window, out your blind spot. That's number one. Number two is if you check all the, if you do the correct observation, but there's a car coming up behind you or there's somebody standing in front of you or whatever, and it's not safe to move and you still move out, that would also be a mark because you've looked, but you haven't actually seen what was going on. Also, another reason we could get marked for observation moving off is say you do your observation, you stick your signal on and there's a car coming behind you and you leave your signal on as the car is coming up behind you. If you look around and there's a car coming, we don't signal. If you look around and there's no car but a car comes later, you cancel your signal, let them go past and then you look signal and continue on. Very important. But if you want to pass your driving test with us, click the link in the description, fill out the form and if we can, we'll be happy to help. Let's get that license. Next, we're going to be talking about observation turn and right. This is a very common mistake a lot of people do. Take a look at this video here. A much better way to do your observation turn and right. So we're going to nail this right turn now. We've mirrored, signal. I know the hole is straight with the line. I'm on the brake. Look to the right. There's the centre line. Look ahead. There's nothing coming. Look where you're going. Now you can see the speed limit sign. Now you can see your... So the main position. reason why you could be getting marked for observation turn and right is this. Did you see in the video, once that road opened up, I took a big look to the right, nice and early, just to check what was going on down the road where we were going. So that's step one, you have to do that big look first. Next was when I knew it was safe, when I was going to steer, I was looking where I was going. That's the most important, you have to look where you're going. And I say that in all my videos. And then number three will be this. So imagine for instance, you can get, there's two reasons why you could get marked here. So imagine there's a car coming towards you and we still pull out in front of it when the tester felt it wasn't safe to do so. You can get marked for observation for not actually seeing the car or bike or whatever, or for right of way turn and right, but sometimes it's observation. Also, if you look to the right, and there's a pedestrian crossing the road or there's traffic built up and it wasn't safe for us to make the turn, well then you'd be expected to look to the right and stop with, because if there's somebody crossing the road, we're not allowed to drive at them. All right, so that's very important. That's a few different reasons why you can get marked for observation turn and right. Next, we're gonna be talking about observation at the roundabout. This is a very common mistake a lot of people make. Take a look at these two short clips here. Here, left, show time, mirror, signal left. I'm in position like a left turn. I'm on the brake. Now, L for look. We don't look out the windscreen. We will turn your head and look out this window. And if you see a car coming, stop. Look ahead, look to the right, and then just look where you're going. And roundabout ahead, we're going straight through second exit. So position in on the left. I'm going to slow with the brake. I'm going to look to the right out this window. Because of this truck, I have to stop. And remember, if I straight through, I'm going around the outside as best as I can. Look to the right, around get around this footpath first. Left mirror, left signal. In on so the, the main left. reason why you could be getting marked for observation at the roundabout is this. On approach, after you do your mirror, signal, position, slow, you have to look ahead and to the right. All right? If you wait till the very last minute to look to the right, the tester might mark you for observation because they felt you should have looked a little bit sooner. And another reason why you could be getting marked for observation at the roundabout is, did you see in the first clip the way I said, don't look out your windscreen? You have to turn your head and look out your side window, your driver's side window because then you will be looking out to the right. 
And the last reason why you can get marked for observation at a roundabout is if you look to the right and you see a car coming and you still pull out in front of it. Depending on how close that car is will depend on the grade of the mark. You'll fail your test if it's dangerous. So look ahead to the right. If it's safe to do so, keep going. So next I'm going to show you two examples of why this person probably failed his driving test for observation turn on left. Take a look at these two scenarios here. We're going to be turn on left. So did you see in the first one there where he positioned in, he was looking what was happening and as he was driving there was a car parked on the left and there was cars coming towards him. The best thing he should have done was just stopped, let them two cars pass and then he could have easily went straight past them two cars. So when, when you're looking where you're going, you have to actually see what's going on as well. There's no point looking but you may as well have your eyes closed because you're not actually looking at what's happening. If it's not safe to continue on, he would have been better just stopping. The next example with the pedestrian, that was definitely a fail because he was looking at the pedestrian and we were continuing to drive at him, especially because that pedestrian didn't turn around and know we were there. Like, and he could have done anything. He could have turned around and walked back the other way. So we didn't know what he was going to do and he didn't know we were there. So a better way to do that would have been in position, seeing the car on the brake, clutch in and stop. You can't be driving at somebody or something on the road. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about observation on the reverse around the corner. So just take a look at this video here. The best place to look is in your left mirror. The reason why we look there is because that's where the curb is. Happy that you're in a straight line. That's when you can turn around and look over your left shoulder, out the back window, and then straight back to here. So I'll show you what I mean now. So we're going back in a straight line. If I'm happy with this, quick look at the back window and straight back to here. If it still looks good, look ahead and in the right mirror, back to here. If it still looks good, back window, back to here. I can see a pedestrian behind me now. Back window, so we see that she's gonna cross the road, so I have to wait for her now. But instead of just looking at her, she's on the road now. You'll probably see her in the mirror. So I have to wait till she crosses. Instead of just looking at her, I'm kind of just doing a bit of observation. And with my back wheel, so I know it's clear now. So there's a car coming ahead. Back wheels get to here. So I'm going, there's a car just coming right beside me there. He's turning behind me, that's what usually happens. So I've done my quarter stair. Oh, it looks like I need another one. I'm going to do my second quarter stair. Once I'm... Once I'm in, I'm gonna check my blind spot. I'm gonna just hold the wheel. If I need another stair, I'm gonna just do another quarter stair. I'm gonna check my blind spot and back to here. I can just hold my wheel, I'm gonna check my blind spot. Now I can see a black car coming. I'm gonna check my blind spot and stop for them. It looks like I'm coming close now, I'm gonna take her off a quarter. I'm going to check my blind spot. It looks like I can just hold the wheel here, back window. I'm going to take it off another quarter. And then I'm going to just hold the wheel, another blind spot. Now it looks like I need to straighten up a little bit, so I'm going to just get it straight with the path. Stop. Straighten my wheel. Back window. This is kind of bending a little bit funny, it's like staying with the path. Back window. Back window, yeah, right mirror. Still looks good. I can take my eyes off the pad now and stop. So the trick when you're reversing around the corner is I like to look at the left mirror first just to make sure the car is nice and straight. And when you're going back in a straight line, when you know it's straight and it's reasonably close to the pad, that's when you can take your eyes off the mirror and look out your back window, but get straight back to your left mirror because that's where the path is. If it's still nice and straight and reasonably close, then you can do a bit more looking around.
go back to your left mirror. If you need to steer, look in your left mirror and fix a force. There's no point looking everywhere trying to steer because your car can end up absolutely anywhere. So only when you're happy it's straight with the path are you going to be doing your looking around. Once we start steering and we're happy with our position, that's when we can look out our right window and check out your blind spot. And we want to do that three or four times as we're coming around. If there's a car coming from behind us, we stop in good time. If there's a car coming from in front of us, there's no need to stop until they kind of get side by side with you. Just to make sure they don't want to like turn in behind you, the way it happened in that video there. Just remember, if you want to get some online coaching off me, you can join my YouTube membership program and I'll be running calls once a week to help you guys pass your driving test. Also, if you like the video, like, subscribe, share with your friends and I'll see you in the next one.